that, Cam Capstee bird, bit of oil on your finger, like so, and this says H, where the fuck is H? H is there. So, one thing I did forget to mention, and I forgot, so I'm going to have to take all these off, is that one of these, um, I don't know why it's not both, but the, the uh, manual doesn't say both. No, it doesn't say both. Just the one. Oh no, well, it'll be two. What the fuck am I talking about? So there's the two dowels that go in every single cap. Which cap is this? D. Obviously they have caps you tip. So I've just been checking uh, my old parts box and there are only, there is only one dowel per, um, I will spit it out, there is only one dowel per um, cap. But I've got shitloads of new ones so I'm just going to stick two in. They've opted for two because there is um, a recess to accept the dowels in the actual caps and in here they've just cheaped out because you don't really need them the dowels are there to help with thrusting loads so these caps don't want to tip um, not so much alignment that much although yeah you can't move if you've got alignment that's right so uh, yeah so fuck it mine's getting two because that's what it was designed to have so uh, Do you know what, there's things like this engine I just don't like. Is that not twat, that? Or are we in the wrong order here? That does say C, doesn't it? A, B, C, D. So what the fuck is going on there? something not right here. Oh, see if I can focus. Focus, you bastard. So, there's a cam cap here that says C, and then there's this uh, mounting point on top, which is for the um, oh, oil system and what have you. And that nodule there, so on this side on G we have a nodule here and then we have something right below it which is the oil feed. And then on that one we have it sat there and that doesn't look right to me. Because it looks like that bolt there on the cam sprocket is going to twat it when it turns around. So that's not right. Does it go that way? But if it goes that way, then that means that the arrows are wrong. Let me have a look at this and we'll see what's what. It's alright, the pennies dropped. So all the arrows point towards the front of the bike, or the front of the engine. Then it makes sense when you flip round this C so it isn't going to clout that sprocket. This is what I mean, you should always check stuff. I've actually looked in the manual, I know you're all probably screaming at the TV going, well just check the manual. The manual doesn't actually say anything about these arrows, not that I've, I've skimmed read it, but it might say they're in there somewhere, but I will check and I will update it if it does. If it doesn't... Then we're all mustard. Let's get some bloody bolts in. These are all the same size. Yeah, so the arrows just point forward towards the front of the engine. And now that makes sense. But this is what I mean, you see. If you see something that doesn't seem to make sense, stop, have a good look, try and find some information, have a think about it and go hang about. Something just doesn't smell right. You've got to think that all these things are rotating. And it come, becomes pretty obvious when you can see something just like that as an example. That was going to twat 
the bolts in the sprocket were going to come around and twat that and you wouldn't know that until you'd built it and this is why I would do a dry run but even before that just keep your eyes and your ears open and smelling lick stuff you know take it to bed romantic dinner blah 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 and uh, just you know keep your wits about you right then now what we're going to do is torque all these bolts down um, I think that these have to not be torqued down because I think that holds the brace, is that right? This chain guard, yeah. So I'll put that on as well actually while we're at it. Um, it does point forward, so there's an arrow on top of there. That needs to be pointing forward like every single other arrow. And all the cam blocks, that now all makes sense. It's not me going insane. Right, what's the torque for these puppies? Right, so as usual, that what comes out, 6 point, fucking 12 point, and it wanted 12, so that's 10, 12, that's fucking bugger all, isn't it? So, take this extension bar off first. I need to get myself one of these small extension bars with just nails. I can do this a lot easier. Now it doesn't matter, there is an order to this one, two, three, four. It doesn't it really doesn't matter. As long as you do a crisscross pattern, it really doesn't matter. So I just give it up. Fucking hell no, I don't. One turn like that. One turn like that until you fit it up tight. One turn like that. One turn like that. Take up the slack. Start anywhere you want. Oh, that's 12. Huh? Bugger all, isn't it? Jesus. Really? Is that it? And these have got a lot, long way to go, these caps. So if your caps aren't fitting properly, and I'll illustrate better with um, one that's at the front. But if your caps are going down, the sat up because of dowels or what have you, then uh, I'll show you how to do that. Ah, oh, feck. So this is something you don't see very often. Let's see if I can get that to focus. Look at that. Motherfucker. Excuse my French, but Jesus. And let's just strip that entire thread out. This is 12 newton meters. I was just tightening it. It tightened a bit, then it went loose. Then I tightened it, it went loose. And it just pulled out the entire fucking thread. Oh, bollocks. That is not good. That is not good. Well, that's kind of put this... Oh, shit. That's kind of terminated this. Why does that just pull that thread clean out? Literally tiny to 12 newton meters, it wasn't tight. Let's just strip the thread clean out of it. That's just the other one, I was just looking to see if there were any of the rest of them were in bad nick. See, these are all been done to 12 newton meters. There's no denying that it's 12 newton meters. You know, I'm not thinking is this torque wrench wrong because that is nothing. That's you know, that's not tight. That's, that's 12 newton meters. That's what it feels like. It's nothing. I'm not wrenching on it. Nothing shifting. Feck, you know. I've just got to take the whole bloody thing off now. Right, so our solution to this problem was to use a um, one of our black oxide M6s. And uh, what I've done is I've basically used a spring washer just as a spacer. Now, these are flange bolts, which means they have a large surface area to clamp down on. So in a sense, it's a, a, 
it's a hex bolt and a washer where because it's actually part of this guide we're actually all right just to put a spring washer in there to preload the, the um, thread and it did wind down nice and tight and all the rest of it. Is this a perfect solution? No. I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking the same thing. Take the entire head off and put helicoils in every single one of these just in case it's going to fail. However, can't bother to do that. There's been enough setbacks to this bloody thing as it is. This should be fine. It's only one bolt. It's a bearing cap. It is a thrust bearing cap, but it is just the one bolt and I did dry run this um, cap screw down in there and it did feel like there were some very very solid threads and about um, 10 millimeters worth of solid threads which is easily enough even in aluminium so talk that down um, this all seems to be all good uh, we don't have any clearance issues not that I can see right now we'll find out in a second um, but I don't think there's any clearance issues we'll just see where our oil pipe snakes and with all that said we can now move on put the uh, oil system back in gasket rocker cover and hopefully try and get this engine as it is into the frame that would be absolutely wonderful that's what i'm aiming for that's why i didn't want to stop and sort this out if this does come loose if this does come loose and the whole thing wants to start to explode and shit goes everywhere and so on and so forth that's great because this is the YouTube project bike and this is going to be around for a long time so if something does go wrong we can see number one if something did go wrong was it this and number two is how did it go wrong and then I can show you how to actually sort the whole thing out you know if this bike works perfectly for the next 20 years I will be slightly pissed off because the whole point is I'm not trying to make the thing break but if things do go wrong it's like if I put this engine together put fuel in it and it starts up first time I'm going to be so pissed off because I want it to have issues I want it to have issues so I can show you how to sort them issues out um, in the future I'm going to do a series on um, issues you know diagnosing issues problems with your engine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to physically actually go into the engine and um, mess things up I'm going to literally come in here and I'm going to change your exhaust um, your uh, tappet clearances um, so they're out of whack the gaps are too uh, your valve clearances are too um, loose or too tight I'm going to fuck around with spark plug gaps I'm going to mess around with carbs I'm going to mess around with a blockage in your oil system I'm going to try and do as many things as I can too high compression so on and so forth and try and show you first what the symptom is and then, even though I know in the back of my mind exactly what it, uh, you know, I know what it is. I've just done it on purpose. But we can have a what the engine sounds before a recording, you know, a video recording of what the engine sounds like running at idle and at higher RPMs under load on the road. And then I'll be able to show you what it sounds like now. And if you have an engine that runs shit like this, then so and so and so, and, so. and then I'll go through the steps of how to diagnose exactly where that is coming from. Um, for example you could have a uh, really shit idle condition but then when you rev the engine it's all fine generally that's the pilot jet that's in your carb you can tell that because there are two different situations idle crap higher rpm great so obviously because this is an intermittent fault with changing conditions or a changing condition situation then that can give you a hint to where it is and I'm going to show you loads and loads and loads of issues that can happen not just with this bike in bikes in general uh, we'll do some electrical failures and stuff like that as well what happens when you have a shitty um, HT lead that's leaking um, what, what happens when you have shitty coils bad earths etc etc shit in your fuel so on and so forth but regardless what we're going to do is um, well finish up with this and then uh, hopefully get it in the frame <laughs> 